Hi, so my name is Tvetos. Uh, for people who don't know me, hmm, who I am? <laughs> I am a fan of mobile testing, so I am a former student of Porno School. So I'm the person, uh, I'm not a manager or a team lead, so really I just enjoy my life as a mobile tester. And I don't want to be any rank of whatever management involved in my life because I'm just enjoy my life. So, and I enjoy to work with you guys after hours. If I'm a manager, so then all my schedule will be really screwed, <laughs> be honest with you. So, um, I graduated Portnoff School in December 2011, and everybody's like, what? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> true and only true today. So, and uh, I just passionate in my subject, and um, for the last two plus years, I really gain lots so from working um, between three different companies plus uh, teaching in a school. So I'm involved in some uh, project on the side. You know, in Silicon Valley, it's always some project running. Um, plus, um, currently I'm working to create my own company. Yes, it's so far. Can you believe it? I cannot believe myself, but it's true. All right, so it's just a uh, very quick introduction about myself. Uh, the one more private thing then uh, it's my first time then I do online class from home so and anytime unexpectedly my son can just jump in the room so I apologize for that if it's happened normally he's a very good guy okay so now about come back to original subject to why we met today and we met for our uh, 10 session mobile testing class I want to clarify it in the beginning. Um, I don't know what is your expectation for 10 hours. You understand and get real. So then at 10 hours, um, all what I can do, you know, just bring you pretty much um, to surface of mobile testing, manual mobile testing. Uh, we will. I will try to cover it so much as possible. And uh, you're always welcome. I never, you know, just uh, leave people alone. So after class is over. So you will, I, let's type my Skype number so then you always can connect to me. So I'm very active on LinkedIn, then uh, I have my own group there. If you have questions there, then you can reach me there. So the best way to reach me is will be Skype. Um, yeah, it will be a very quick response then. So let's type it in. Oops, sorry was not it. Just a second. Okay, here's it. So, now, uh, what really can we do in 10 weeks? Uh, actually, quite a lot. So, today we start with mobile ecosystem and I just try to bring you uh, like full picture of a mobile ecosystem. So I will switch between mobile and mobile. The both uh, pronunciation is correct and uh, sorry my accent anyway. Uh, so but you know if we go to, to American version of uh, word mobi mobile then it will be mobile. So but if we try to talk as uh, European guys or Indian or Russian yeah then we will switch to mobile. So just get used to, to both uh, pronunciation, it's fine. Uh, for the next uh, couple of weeks, we will go through the, you know, devices. So my main goal is uh, bring you to comfortable level. Uh, so when you go through the face-to-face -face and uh, phone interview, when you talk about mobiles, so what is your, what's your daily activity, how you do testing, you know, like from real life. So, and I have a lot of... Um, I actually it's like a collection of questions and answer then I collect we collect through the Parnov school and we also have through the uh, quite a lot friends of mine and uh, you know this they always bring all my former students as well so they understand the purpose why I need all this question from interview and uh, I always get some new interesting question so and if it's happened I always try to bring it to you all right, and you will see, uh, I pretty much just put everything in the slide, uh, then you can see what will be in the lecture 6 or 7 and 8 if somebody interested. Um, what is my expectation or responsibility from you guys? Uh, you know, 
I'm not a service girl, be honest with you. Uh, I'm happy to help you. I want to help you. Uh, but uh, you also need to work. It's not just like uh, people have fun to listen and, you know, get a lot of information and get overwhelmed. Okay, fine. But uh, at the same, at same point, the main things what I'm expecting from you, then at least after webinar is done, uh, so and you will get the session recorded in your hands, please review it. So what is my expectation now from you? Uh, this is also, if we go to real life, your first couple of weeks of work, uh, what is a good attitude to show? What is a good response to show this, uh, you know, to, because in America they label everybody. And uh, pretty much if they put this special label on you and it's not a good one in the first couple of days, my goodness, it's very hard to turn and start all over again and uh, turn their mind and you're a very good person. So and the thing is, it's come to the questions. Uh, how many questions is right? Do you need to ask questions or you just should be quiet? So we need to come to the golden middle. I expect you to have a question. If you do not have a question, it means two things for me and both is good, bad for you. Because it means, and whether you are a arrogant person and you don't care and you know everything already, then why are you uh, anyway in my class? So, or uh, you just completely don't know anything and afraid to ask and how you will go to real life again. So the both version is bad. Uh, if you be excessive with question, it's also bad. <laughs> uh, specifically, if you repeat question after I already give you answer, it means then you have no clue what I'm talking about from the first uh, time. And it means then you was not going to our collective email that I will create for you to see this what extra material I will provide for you. Uh, so. And it will be a lot of learning materials on the side that you should open. I know also if you not understand or will not appreciate this now, first you will get your job or first you start to really face facing interview. So then you will appreciate everything then you will get on the side. Okay, so let's move forward. Oh my goodness, what is this? Um, you know, it's how I was uh, see the mobile testing when I just started so over two years ago. I know I, everybody knows something about mobiles, uh, but it's like black and white mesh, no flavor, no c color, and uh, it's absolutely messed up So between all this connection, who is who and for what. And it's how we always uh, start and uh, how we feel. And I hope we will clarify it and a little bit organize this mesh network things so at the end of our 10 sessions. Okay, so. Um, is it I took them from some textbook? No. Uh, you know, I always try to um, go, I don't know, experiment and try to find ways that then you guys understand and uh, always with some practical example and get away from uh, definition and theories. Uh, and it's people sometimes say like, are you guys compromising this classical system of Michael or Marina? Not at all. So it's actually we try to bring to you different point of view. Best example, in every company you will work, and I am 100% sure that only maybe 1% of you will get the first job and stay in this company forever. Normally these people change, specifically in our industry, it's normal to have some contract for 3, 5, 6, 9 or so months or year and jump into the next. So to grow and continue and, you know, bright horizon and things like that. It's a normal for industry. Nobody really uh, can think that you jump in monkey if you work like this. But the catch is then every time in every company you come, uh, believe it or not, they will have their own standard or point of view, how they do things, their own templates, how they uh, manage things. So, and uh, it's why I think it's a very good idea uh, in uh, online class, bring some classical and modern, some mobile um, understanding of testing with di different definition or approaches. So then you will not get some set up one template, one standard only. So I want you to be flexible. I want you to understand that both system is right and living together. It depends on uh, what organization you will get a job. 
So, and if you think from this point of view, I think it will be for you easy and kind of fun. Try different templates, try different things to do. Okay? All right. So, now, uh, all this that, um, I create some kind of my vision of mobile ecosystem. And let's start with operators. Um, one more thing before we start going so like from tile to tile. Uh, why should we understand mobile ecosystem anyways? It's like, oh my goodness, it must be some boring uh, things for another hours. Maybe I just put this on hold and go do my things. So the thing <laughs> is then, um, if you know conceptually this how this ecosystem is created so in the mobile world, then you will cover a lot of uh, different interview questions and you can also, you know, bring some analytical thing and show this because most of us, in inter when we have our uh, resume, put something, oh, problem-solving expert or whatever, excellent uh, analyzing skills and things like that. Prove it. So your proving point will be this if you can explain so this mobile ecosystem in your own words. If you understand how big is that, how 360 degree big circle is that. And it's also help you to be expert in the company very soon. Um, I, again, this, I, I will bring you a lot of practical examples. So, but, you know, this, uh, if you know devices, if you're really interested in mobile world, what's going on, the so technique and trends and things. So follow the news, follow the uh, specific company. Then at some point of view, you know, this, uh, I have this, uh, these days, I have like every day some um, emails or Skypes. Uh, then people ask me my opinion. So what should they do and how they should do. And it's not because I become expert. So, and it's a, in really so short period of time. So why? Because I show my passion because I am consistently so this provide right information and value information to the person if they are looking for some information. So take it or leave it. You can do the same. Everybody is able to do it. It's not really high tech information. Then you're not able to catch it. And I will give you tips where to start. Don't worry. We will go through that. Okay. So, operators, man, you know, we hate them, but we need them. So, this, this initial guys, um, other names, carrier providers, so who create and establish all this network physically, all the cell towers, uh, accelerators, so antennas and all these things. So, they also connect us uh, to a subscriber and maintain our relationships uh, with subscriber. So, and they hand, is handling all this billing issue, and that's why we do not really like them so much. So, um, thanks God, now the some of these providers like T-Mobile go out of two years contract. So, but um, because they kind of monopolize this niche of uh, connection between physical network and um, devices itself, so we still need them. They like a build stone, fundamental things in all our ecosystem. So top U.S. Uh, carriers is still Verizon and TNT, Sprint and T-Mobile. Funny, yeah, T-Mobile is actually a European company. So the next tile, it will be networks. And why should we talk about networks? I mean, like, really, is it uh, so necessary? But the role of network in mobile testing is huge. So, first thing, then, you know, when we do go through the test planning, then uh, we need to think about infrastructure of network. Because uh, what is the sense to create some super cool, fancy device with some 5G, so it brings this to South Africa, where the 3G is uh, like super high tech. So, at this point, it's like make no sense. <laughs> it's why this, uh, we always need to uh, watch out for these things. Um, ability to save and transfer information, specifically if we talk about clouds, boom, without network it doesn't work. Uh, we talk about speed of connection and we will just uh, spend a little bit more time about this special GGG things. So, and uh, depends of type of connection, we have some specific uh, connectivity testing. And it's uh, like first ABC, you write this down or you will remember because it's the first things then will um, 
differentiate you from other tester when you go through the inter interview. Very simple questions, uh, and it's come very often in interview. So if you do not have time, if you do not have enough resources, like, okay, we can say you have two hours of testing, what kind of testing you will perform? Do you have an answer for this question? Anybody? Hey, I like to see this, your response on Skype, by the way. This I try to talk to people, also if I cannot hear you. So, anybody know this? what kind of testing you will perform if you're really in rush, but you need to get some good coverage of uh, application or program? No? Oh, cool. Somebody's already response. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. So, what you got? Explorative smoke testing. Okay. Monkey testing, GUI, positive. My goodness, guys, you know a lot and it's nothing to do <laughs> with the, really this what has happened in mobile world. Okay, so what else? Uh, in structure testing, okay, I don't know anything about that, to be honest with you. So what else we got? Elena, Angeli, Anna. So positive, blah, 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 ad hoc. Okay. Be honest with you, this we will talk about ad hoc later, so I am not a fan of ad hoc. Okay, cool, not sure, I like this answer, so it's the right one. Okay, here's a keyword, and you need to oh, try to type. Call F-U-N, it's called FUN. So, what does it stand for? For functionality, UI, and network connectivity. Three milestone, three major uh, type of uh, cat, I don't like the word type, so because type it will relate to other things. So category of testing that you need to perform to cover so a good quality of application or program. So you need to remember this. You can play with this word during interview because if they ask you, so what kind of testing you will perform, you will just say fun. It's like, what? Fun? Are you making fun of me? It's like, no, I will per perform functionality, UI and network connectivity. First you say the last so uh, letter of N, people start look at you with very warm eyes and good smile because not all this, uh, most of people you know who come for interview specifically for manual testing, I don't like word black box because black box it's like classic textbooks word. So this uh, in the real world world people say manual testing. So um Things as then, you know, we need to go at least through this uh, three uh, category of testing. Okay, so, and again, uh, why I brought this up? Because without uh, this last N, it's uh, useless because everybody can tell, so interviewer then, yeah, I will do functionality in UI. And it's it? No, it's not. We need a little bit more than that. Okay, so, um, mobile protocol stack testing. Uh, it's a huge part, it's actually called system level testing, so for every application, and uh, we do have this in majority of uh, companies, so the go through, most of it is automated to use some special network simulators, so okay, it's not your area of expertise, but you need to be aware that it exists. So, and it's a part of uh, major mobile testing, because we differentiate mobile testing and mobile application testing. And we will talk about this uh, later one more time. So, in performance loss, uh, load, stress testing, soaked uh, testing for gaming, we always and always come back to network. Uh, for geolocation API and services, for compatibility browsing testing, again, without network we cannot do anything. So now, when I hope I pursue it, so why? Oh, lost the sound. Does anybody else lost the sound? Can you hear me? I hope you do. So now this, uh, when I hope I pursue it, this, then it's a really important part. Yeah. So the, <laughs> I see this thing. Guys who repeat, uh, so the, the repeating group, so they already know the answer. It's good. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, you can hear me. Good. So, uh, network concept. Without any special definition and, you know, because uh, first I start looking at when I create presentation, uh, over a year ago, don't worry, I update this frequently. <laughs> it's a not one year old presentation and some guys who attend my class last time can testify that I always change at least something, so update things. So, but um, without to use some 
hard, uh, very complicated, complex definition. Uh, so try to understand the nature of it, what we're talking about. So what is, uh, ne I don't know, cellular technology at all? It's just a radio that receives signal from antenna. So, okay, this uh, radio wave could be different frequency, amplitude, uh, okay, you know, speeds, how they go transmitted so be between this antenna spot. But it's still the nature of radio waves. And types of radio waves and antennas determine the capability of a network and differentiate the services. So, depends on all this technical, um, depends of waves and depends of we can say easy way this antenna uh, construction and so some fancy or less fancy stuff uh, that we have in these antennas. So we can uh, have better reception speed or stronger signal or weak single, uh, signal. And it doesn't matter how far is uh, technology go. Uh, if we look globally, then basic network around the world is still GSM and CDMA. All right, they just like a uh, little bit translate, you know, this uh, from just to be simple GSM to CDMA to something uh, like, like here, oh, I got this, okay, so like uh, H or HCDPA, so, but it's still the same thing. All right, so when we talk about Wi-Fi, it's actually cool things, then uh, good things to know, then uh, Wi-Fi, in history of Wi-Fi, started with Apple in 1999. So when it's uh, become an uh, option in iBook, and it was called Airport, so this uh, sense Airport, uh, our technology has changed. So now we come to this all these G things. Okay, G stand for generation, um, and actually every time they put this special G uh, behind the number, they really try to uh, bring it up so then it's a new generation is uh, born and begin. So it's a, some new way to transmit radio signal. As the first G, it was just analog sing, uh, signal used by cellular tower. So 2G, it was like first upgraded uh, digital signal that allow, allowed to uh, send it, um, text messaging across the network. 3G, which was really like long-term uh, network, uh, was created by using um, electromagnetic wavelengths, so that whole spectrum, and broadcast wireless broadband uh, signal that allow user to access the internet and download application. Okay, everybody remember all this excited this 3G for, uh, phones because it was first smartphones, uh, first smartphone come in 2007, and it was uh, so iPhone. Okay, era of 4G is cool. cool ultra broadband and technologies behind and it's based on a really bundle of internet protocols it's called internet protocol packet switch switching uh, so protocol oh, sorry bundle that uh, instead of circuit switch technology use uh, special um, call frequency domain equalizer methods so, I mean, I, I understand that I go already like too far in technical things. Nobody really will ask you uh, during interview, but with exception, if you go to a company that really specializes in uh, networking, or it could be uh, so helpful to understand the nature of 4G and 3G, uh, or if we go to Bluetooth technology. So what kind of Bluetooth technology you know today? Uh, what is as today? <laughs> because uh, if you go, for example, it's a very common question uh, for when you go and have an interview in Skype. So for Skype company, uh, for Yahoo, uh, and uh, any cloud will ask question like this. Then uh, you need to know the uh, network protocols. But what about Bluetooth? What do you know about Bluetooth? What kind of Bluetooth is today? We have on the market number or name something anybody so i don't want to stop it's like must be hop 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 <laughs> let me check is anybody response four zero yeah four zero it's a ble so bluetooth low energy uh and it's came actually this uh this latest iphone and yep so it's okay but 
And we still have Bluetooth 2.0. Why? Because 2.0 is a voice related. 4.0 is a more uh, packet related. Uh, so related, you transfer data. So and it's a very very efficient uh, speed, almost speed of light. Okay. So today, what you need to know about the mobile network? VMAX and LTE. It's uh, represent 4G. It's must things you need to know. Type of 3G broadband, um, at least like uh, you need to know H and um, HS DPA. It actually, it was tricky because you know this up to iPhone 5 really, um, Apple do not have uh, 4G. So it was always like, haha, strong point of Android. So and uh, from uh, iPhone it was just a special trick from AT&T when they try to, you know, uh, combine HSDPA plus the firmware and uh, position it as a 4G, but it was never really 4G until uh, iPhone, so iPhone 5 came on the market. Okay, so we continue. Oh man, it's 5G here in a way. Um, it's actually already this um, as better version in China. So Samsung was, you know, initiator of 5G. Uh, so it's uh, expected in the United States uh, in 2020. Man, we sh still need to wait another six years. But who knows? Uh, technology is progressing so fast, and maybe it's come uh, faster in the market than we predicted. So I like, you know, this. Uh, what is a 5G? So why we talk about G G G things? Because uh, it's a speed. Okay. Uh, what is the normal size of video? Full time, full size video like between two and a half to right now with high definition things maybe six gigabyte yes no and um, you know this how long it can take you for example if you want to download um, so and have this on your desktop I don't know on your tablet if not phone so we have phone with 64 gigabytes memory so I mean sorry hard drive right now so then uh, we can uh, actually have some couple of favorite movies there if we want to. So how long it takes to download movie like that? It's quite long these days. Because uh, with 4G, the maximum, they was promising uh, speed up to 1 gigabyte per second. But uh, the maximum speed they reach with 4G, um, I think it was 570 megabyte, uh, megabit, sorry, megabit per second. So. Uh, with 5G technologies, they already have physical, uh, they tested this in China, and it was physical speed of 1 gigabit per second. So, your full-size movie will be um, done in less than what? 10, 15 seconds? Hoo-hoo, cool. <laughs> I, I, I cannot imagine this. If it's come in American market, it will be completely blow off things, you know. It's, I, I don't know. I'm, I cannot wait when it's come. So, how is it possible? Because uh, it's, I cannot really call this 5G. So, because it's not really breakthrough technology. They still use the base of 4G. The only thing they change, instead of like a couple uh, channel or one channel, this depends on uh, who is provider. So, they use uh, 64 simultaneous stream uh, from uh, 64 antennas, plus they use this MIMO technology, uh, then, you know, if signal is half obstacle and uh, normally it was bouncing in any direction, whatever it was, so this MIMO technology, you can uh, pretty much preset if uh, your signal met some optical, obstacle, so then you, your signal will retrieve to the point where there is no obstacle and go against like a programming way where it should go. Uh, go. So at this point from 64 possibility uh, and with this special backup technology uh, go around obstacle, you make sure, I mean this provider makes sure, then your signal will go without any latency, without any delay very, very fast. It's what is this uh, on the background. So why I tell you, like, my goodness, she overloaded me already. So sorry, but uh, again, how you will prove that, you know, it's not just your knowledge, but your passion. Uh, and you know what you're talking about. So tester always at the edge of technology. They always, the first hand, so to, uh, you know, before it's come in the market. And uh, it's why 
it's the most exciting profession that I, I ever found in my life. So, and it's it's why. <laughs> so we we have this, uh, you know, we need to know at least little bit. At least then we can explain with our own non-professional, no non-technical words. So this uh, how it's work and bring our excitement. So then I really want to be in a, in a work in a company like this. Oh, here's a slide, guys. Remember this, uh, you can just put in your notes. Slide 15, uh, one of the must slides. And if you, in the future, so after class or during the class, will face interview with any cloud-based, cloud-related company. So you need to come back to this slide. And here's the minimum of uh, protocols that you should know. So for each level, um, Actually, it's not level layers of the network stack protocol. Because uh, so, it, what you should know. I mean, at least abbreviation. So, what does this mean? At least understand to on what layer is it's, to what layer it belongs. So, and you know, if at least so, this you see, it's a surface. Actually, on each of these layers, they have much much more protocols, but. This one is coming over and over again. If you don't know anything about these protocols, more likely you will uh, fail interview for any clouds-related uh, company. So, sound lost again, man. So, where did it go? I don't touch anything. I don't move anything. So, I hope it will back somehow. <laughs> it's okay. Cool. All right. Continue. <laughs> you scare me. Okay, um, why I brought these things? I mean, we already talked about speed. Uh, so, okay, the <laughs> signal is not still going uh, with the speed of light. But uh, I tell you a story, and I tell you every class, and it's a real t a real uh, story. So one of my friends, uh, back two years ago, when, you know, he was completely um, not comfortable with his knowledge of uh, mobile, and on top of that, so his English was not really, like, satisfied himself for this matter, so he really wanted to get a good job. Instead, I mean, he was really prepared for interview, but, you know, to, to back him up, so he created, instead of just... Uh, a copy of his resume, some kind of uh, presentation folder. So, and collect different uh, information from internet or from our training, uh, so from our, at this time, current uh, work. So, different, you know, uh, sheets of information, cheating sheets. And when he come to interview um, and they ask him some question, then he know, but for him it was hard to explain. He started pulling the sheets on the table and explain, so based on this, uh, some uh, graphs or whatever, some tables, so what he know about. And every time it was like explanation, I found this on the internet, uh, so my friend provides me information, or I just have training about that, or I'm really interested in the subject and I brought to show you. Guys, I cannot believe when he tell me this uh, story first time, I'm like, what? Man, it's a cheating. I learned these things as a crazy, try to memorize this, all this number and everything. And he just pull, printed out, so put this all in one folder, brought this to interview, and it was work. I was like, okay, for 30 minutes, how many times you use this trick? He's like, oh, I don't remember, maybe like six, seven times. Like, what? And it's work? He said, yeah. All right, we make experiment over and over again with this special magic folder. He, by the way, he got a job. So, and two years later, he's a guy that's uh, proud and he's my friend. So he's, uh, you know, got super good job uh, with over 100,000 uh, so paycheck in year. And uh, he really enjoyed his life. So, and we started in the same, in the same point, you know, this, he was in the country only six months. So it's a real story, and it's not like individual only, blah, blah, blah. He must have some special. He have nothing special. He just was passionate. He want, he like to do this, what he do every day. So, yes, and on the side, he never stopped learning things. It was uh, some language, some technical tools, whatever. And, you know, this, uh, they always appreciate it. So because um, I don't say that everybody around you will be lazy or not. You actually will compete quite with people so to get some training and something. 
but you if you show consistent you know interest in uh, some trainings you will get this first believe me because you will be promised in person to give this training so uh, this one is uh, connecting to your mobile network uh, page is actually a good example then you can print it out and bring it to your interview if you want to uh, and uh, I try to create a um, lot of the special table and uh, some graphs for you then you can just print it out uh, cut it off some copyright of me okay I allowed to do this so and uh, just bring it up okay so we go to manufacture I mean so easy is this why we need manufacture and uh, you know people's like oh come on talk about this so <laughs> are you trying to so this uh, waste our time not at all because um, manufacturer is straight relate as they determinate in um, effect operating system and hardware and firmware uh, we also look for mobile platform because each manufacturer some try to experiment in using their own platform it also will uh, so affect mobile browsers devices itself because each manufacturer has their own vision of where to go and how to go and all together it's a manufacturer pu push uh, and dictate the ways of um, feature uh, technology so in, it's also you know this uh, affect model and approach of mobile testing and uh, everybody know all these names or most of it uh, these names and you know this what is said <laughs> That story, uh, part of the story, then a uh, lot of people um, somehow this is um, completely mixed up in their head, and uh, for them, manufacturer and provider is the same thing. So when I ask you what phone you have, I don't want to hear AT&T, Verizon, uh, or whatever. So this, if I ask you a question, or if an interviewer asks you a question, what kind of phone you have, the first response will be this um, maker. So this uh, manufacturer, vendor, so then it will be like you say, all right, I have uh, some iPhone or I have a Nokia. So by the way, Nokia is like not phone anymore. Yeah, it's uh, now we will call this Windows phone anyway. So why? Who knows? Who can tell me why? I want to check this, how really you're interested in mobile <laughs> ecosystem. And you, oh yes, many people know. Good, yes, because they acquired exactly. So you see, this uh, things happened. It's actually uh, we will go just a little couple slides later. So because what is interesting, it happened in mobile world, and why this is so exciting? Because giant uh, guys who was like less than ten years ago, what uh, how many like seven, eight years ago huge company everybody know around the globe today is pretty much like distinguished manners so then nobody know and nobody know where this is, uh, this operating system is still in used or not so the same thing with manufacturer my goodness when uh, you know uh, mobile phone smartphone start all right beside the apple uh, Eric Sony Ericsson uh, LG was huge involvement in uh, as a makers and uh, these days, I, I'll be honest with you, nobody really considers them for daily testing anymore. So, and it's like said, because actually LG uh, have couple not bad phones. So Motorola, they try to improve themselves. They was a cure by Google as well. So, and uh, my goodness, how hard they try. But uh, only like last one, okay, maybe. So this... Um, if we're looking for droids uh, line, then you can work with uh, before that, this was completely not manageable phone. So, <laughs> okay, that's why we come to devices. Oh, who is that guy? It's a Martin Cooper. So I just want then you know. So then era of mobile phones start on April third, nineteen seventy three. So and that's a dude who was the first. So who make him first uh, mobile phone call in New York? And you see, it's come from Motorola. He was. Uh, the guy who worked for Motorola. So around this dude, what we see this, we see the different um, uh, platforms, and we will come to platforms in a one moment. So what is depends on mobile devices and mobile testing? 
First, this is just very simple form factor. We, again, uh, depends on this form factor. We pretty much also can uh, differentiate hard and software. Uh, so for each device, uh, featuring options, UI, target in testing, planning, and game. So because it's a huge thing, then before you start any testing, uh, you will have a meeting. Again, good question and good answer. Uh, what is your participation in the test plan? Because it's a true approach, and I'm guaranteed that you will get some classic, very extensive so intense version from Marina and from Michael. So what uh, is test plan about? So test planning approach and what should be in? And uh, I don't say that it's not right, So you, but you will be very small part of it because uh, as a team member you will somehow involved or they will ask you expert opinion of some certain things. But most of the things will be determined by manager, by uh, marketing, by sale, whatever, by product owner, and blah, 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 blah. And you will be just like a very tiny, small portion of it, so then you really will concentrate. And most of the time, so when during the interview, somebody asks you, do you know anything about test plan? And actually, this it will be 100% in your resume, and you like absolutely cool and expert with uh, test planning. So, in this meaning, it's only mean then you know how to create test cases. Test cases suits test cases. So, and uh, you completely understand what kind of folder uh, when we create test plan of test cases, so people should have and should keep in mind and bring in mind. So, it will be my point to concentrate, to teach you how to do this, and we will spend quite, I think it's all together between test cases, test plan, and uh, bug report, uh, we will have three sessions for that. Because I know people have failure of this left and right, specifically when it's come to interview. And it's the main point that people don't know really how to do. They have a lot of generic blah, 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 but nobody knows how to do this in real world for real. So I can guarantee you that I will try to my best to bring you a real example from real life, not just from my company, but also from company of my friends, how this in reality is look like and how you should come to this and how you should write test cases. So, okay, come back to original. Uh, we talk about uh, devices and mobile form factor. And you will hear this left or right, mobile fact, uh, form factor this and that. So what it is? It's a literally how device look like. So most of the time today, ta-da, we have this touch screen. So, but we still consider this uh, taco form factor. So, because a lot of game consoles still use this form. And actually, this uh, we have like remaker of uh, you know slider and uh, some candy bar things. So it's coming on the market again in some fancy way or uh, another. And we, this day, I always try to bright your horizon and bring this, hey, guys, it's not just it. We have a lot more than that, and specifically in the next year. So it will be your golden point. You will just graduate so your online class and start looking for job actively. And the new technology will bloom in the market, specifically in the summer. So we have a lot of wearable devices, specifically like, okay, I hope, so here's a check, check. Anybody who knows about Google Glass, raise your hands or raise your voice like, yes, yes, yep, yep, something like that. From my class who repeat the session. All right, yes, thank you guys. Cool. So, <laughs> I know this, this days is uh, more and more people know about Google Glass. Unfortunately, it's an old technology. <laughs> Can you believe? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's never come on the market. Not that it's just some whatever was uh, all uh, uh, perception of something. No. Uh, thing is then, be honest again. Um, technology, you know, they have very super cool idea with, about software, how to do this. Hey, why it's come? Um, so, but the problem was, you know, currently I have, uh, okay, how many friends I have? I don't want to impress you with the number, but over 30 friends who have Google Glass in possession. 
so for private or for professional reason. And the thing is, um, so then uh, if you wear this actively, I mean, all this meaning of uh, have Google Glass, if you uh, recording things, so if your video is activated, so then ba battery will be dead in two hours. If you go this on and off, and it's how they recommend it, like, you know, have like 15, 20 minute session and turn this off, blah, blah, blah. So, but, all right, the life of this device about five hours. So after that, you need looking for charger. Oh my gosh, charger, please. Or it's absolutely useless device for $1,500. So all other guys who compete and actually just have very good um, different model and approaches for these wearable devices, we also have MindWave, you know, this uh, reading AKG device, uh, reading your mind and uh, activate some certain program just based on your mind wave. It's a super cool thing. But again, the problem is the uh, heating battery. So where you put all this, it's why there's nobody really ready for the market just to wear it. It's, they always have some uh, bracelet, wrist, device, whatever, where they can put hardware and battery because you cannot really put this in a small tiny things behind your ear. It's what come down today. All right, but, so what is other excited the form factor we have? It's a flexible uh, OLED screen, and it was presented in uh, January 2013 uh, from uh, Samsung. So, and uh, I will show you this. One of your homework will be done. I will give you a list of some super cool YouTube know-how technologies these days. So, and we will have some, it will be one part of your homework, and you need to watch all this and give me some response, give me some question or whatever. So I want to see that you really got it So uh, and got excited. So my goodness, is this all this stuff I can possibly work, very possibly? Hoo-hoo. So, but uh, go away from four, form factor. Hey, six. Oh, yeah, it's another way. So this we have some, uh, it's an experiment from Japan and from Finland. So this is the upper slide. Here's a model from Finland. This one is Japanese tattoo. So that's, you can actually have some chip and they have some special uh, control group of 100 people who wear this chip already for last three months. So, and they try to see how it's working, uh, is it uh, healthy, blah, blah, blah things. So I don't know, it's not easy come in American market because of all this FDA proof, but who knows, sooner or later maybe. But you need to understand and consider that this form factor could be exist and have place for existence as well. Okay, so very quick about types of mobile devices. Because all what we know today, and you will tell me, okay, it's like mobile computers, mobile phones, so wearable computing. But it's not it. We also have much more than that. Uh, and specifically, I want to concentrate on the mobile computers. So we have uh, just mobile internet devices. We have mobile web devices. We have still P uh, PDA. Calculator in uh, game console and portable media player, it still will be considered, uh, so the same things, it will be considered uh, mobile devices. So, and uh, why? Because if you stop thinking about just phones and tablets and will understand then you can possibly work with calculator, which could be some very crazy, uh, you know, holographic, uh, so touchable calculator things. So it's very interesting project as well. Or we have a lot of uh, things going on in automotive industry. So here in Silicon Valley and around the globe. So for non-assistant drivers, for special display uh, augmented reality on the front and uh, rear uh, windows and the back windows, um, then it's a very super interesting project as well. So it's a lot of area where you possibly can work. Market is a huge. In any possible industry, you can find a place where some know-how come and must be tested. So now we talk about platform. Oh my goodness, I need to like, uh, I know some of you will have problem with my very fast speech, but I need to like fasten up. <laughs> so because we already, so pretty much like got our first hour. So and I still almost like a little bit over middle. So what they need to cover. So what is depends on platform and operating system and mobile testing? Pretty much everything, the most important things. It's all mobile feature then we as a customer enjoy. 
and network uh, connection and UI, device settings and uh, just how this the settings, you know, this um, easy or not easy uh, reset and install update and things. So what is this kind of like form factor? Is it tablet, phone or something unusual? And we also have uh, App Store. So because uh, App Store, it's not from end user perspective, it's a cool thing where I go uh, have some uh, top recommended or just search and download some what I need. But from our perspective as a tester, it's a submission requirements, development specification, user guides, so number of application, we have some special certification specifically if, it, if it's proprietary system like iPhone. So then, you know, it's a lot of things behind an App Store. So uh, these days, most common is the three types of mobile platforms. We have license, we have proprietary, and we have open source. License, uh, most famous, it's uh, uh, Java Me, Jimmy, uh, Brew MP. And Limo. Limo stands for Linux Mobile. Um, where you can see this this these days, it is still a lot of providers' firmware. Uh, we still uh, like Gini is uh, highly used in the corporate or systemware. You know this, and um, if we go like really some heavy. Um, Okay, it's come all from Oracle, but you know IBM has their own product, but they also use Java Me. So, uh, if we talk about uh, proprietary, the most uh, recognizable it's uh, Apple with uh, iOS, and the people sometimes can confuse by iOS. So then it's actually OS X plus Darwin. Darwin is uh, Darwin Foundation is actually Unix, so which is a part of operating system and. Uh, any Apple devices. So we have BB10, which actually uh, I need to put slash because now who knows what happened to BB10. Uh, we don't know. <laughs> so because um, they pretty much have very hard time. Uh, almost was accused by Fairfax, but in, in last moment deal was broken. I don't know what happened exactly. So right now this uh, everybody is quiet. So this uh, the CEO of the company is uh, pretty much quit, and now just everybody waits. So what will be next step? Windows Phone, please guys, it's a, like must things. Put this in your note. I beg you, please. So because uh, I have it's happened over and over again. In your resume, when you testified and you work with uh, mobile devices in the past or whatever, so more likely half of you, if not more than half of you, will put for platform uh, as a Windows Mobile. Okay, Windows Mobile as a platform completely discontinued and destroyed, whatever. So in 2010, so we don't have any device which uh, still have or use a Windows Mobile. So we have Windows Phone. It was successor from Windows Mobile. Do not put in your resume Windows Mobile. It's a super old technology which is already distinct. It's not in production anymore. So please, if I see this in your resume, I really, I really will be disappointed. Do not do this to yourself. You understand, one word like this, if uh, you apply for mobile, uh, related job and uh, manager or person who know so that's what they're looking for check your resume they look and see Windows Mobile so they will never call you they will throw away your resume immediately in a trash can only if you specify then you really have worked with Windows Mobile before 2010 so in some specific project because you have over 15 years experience blah 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 okay maybe so it will be accepted. But again, it will be absolutely pointless because nobody needs this technology if nobody can use it. So I hope you got it, all right? So open source. Okay, Android is number one. Uh, so they start in 2008 and overwhelm all worlds. So how? Is it by quality? I mean, it's a really like questionable. But the thing is then they have very good uh, marketing guys inside. So because they uh, implement uh, Android particles, 
of operating system, a platform pretty much like everywhere in the, any possible China corporation things and whatever. So for over 80 makers around the world, so do something and create something using Android operating system or platform. Every time it happened, boom, so they already calculate this as Android device. So a funny story was, for example, like BlackBerry. BlackBerry uh, was used, uh, you know, this uh, Android media player, boom. So pretty much it was messed up, but uh, BlackBerry was considered so Android devices. It's funny, but it's true. So um, I have some information here, but I mean, we talk about this a lot, and uh, it's for your, uh, I will put this presentation in the portal, then you will uh, need to review anyway, and you will see this, uh, and maybe just, uh, again, I encourage you to have question, to clarify something, because it's a great, you know, the chance for you to get something, immediate, the straight individual response, so if we have this 10 weeks together. So, and I brought you also like a new platform, again, we don't, I don't want the new thing only about phones and tablets, because these days we have a uh, platform as they've got much broader as, uh, terms, like uh, we have gaming platform, we have augmented reality platform, we have cross platform, and uh, WebKit, you know, it's like browser cross platform, which is uh, number one around the world. So, and uh, when you talk, you know, this, you need to again understand conceptually then it's not just only one thing and one thing related. So, it's why this, um, again, cool pictures, but I want you to check this. It's your self-learning stuff. So, maybe because you never have this before, maybe you just in the beginning of to discover what is really your thing. And to find this niche and what you really enjoy to do it, not just because you need to get some job and get paid. So, and um, when we talk about platforms, at least the first uh, four names, Android, iOS, BlackBerry Pen, and uh, Windows Phone, it's what it's considered today for daily testing in the United States. So, and it's a right answer, so what kind of platform you know and familiar with. Uh, okay, Tizen is in Linux as operating system. It's a choice number one in China and South Korea. So, Firefox, uh, it's like... A hidden treasure right now, we will see, is a treasure of error, uh, so but it's operating system and two phones is running in five countries since 2012, and uh, they promise a very good generic phone for 80 bucks. So we'll see, it's supposed to come in the market, in the United States market next year. Okay, so um, now, what is it? Describe Android operating system. You know, uh, when we go through the interview or whatever, this, uh, to understand, again, uh, what we're doing and how we're doing things, uh, it's very common question, you know, this what you know about Android, what you know about uh, iPhones. And uh, the question is, to, uh, go towards platform, go towards operating system. And I create, uh, again, it's not a standard, so it means take it or leave it. I create some standard, uh, standard, I create some path, so then you're welcome to use, and I hope it will be very helpful for you, because I know it's helped already over 100 people, so, because, uh, you know, when you're in stress, and uh, uh, when you're during interview, it's always like high performance time, then it's a show time, so then you're always under stress, so it's good then if you establish some template before any possible interview. And you have some template for your answer. Also, you, if you forgot some information, you have very organized answer. It show you confidence and uh, knowledge of subject. Also, if it's not, I mean, do I like, so this, uh, here to um, teach you how to lie? No, but I prefer, you know, this, uh, I try to get you uncomfortable level of performance so to come through the interview. I know this, uh, you know, interview is not everything, it's just first step to get a job. And first two, three weeks after you get a job, you will work super hard to keep this job, so to get really in. So, but um, I think that, you know, our objective is today to get comfortable to come through this first door and get in. It's why this we are here and it's why this uh, I try to make your life easy. <laughs> okay, so here's the path. We start with um, 
For example, Android operating system, source, it will be open source, platform, it's a Linux platform, core language, core language will be Java, operating system architecture, so what is so special about operating system architecture? And uh, I have like next slide that will provide you some special pictures of how it looks like, but what you need to know today without really any picture, for example, this was a couple times and people got some piece of paper with uh, some whatever graph of some operating system and they was asked so what kind of operating system it is and from all names you doesn't matter how many and what layout it look like and uh, how different library blah 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 levels specified there you look for keyword if you see Linux if you see Java core libraries and you see Delvic virtual machine it's 100% Android because Delvic virtual, virtual machine is only and only things for Android. Nobody else have it. Why? Because uh, as an open source, they really like the games to pay fee or whatever, but they use Java, which was belongs to Sun System and after was bought by Oracle in 2010. So, and it was a uh, licensed uh, platform. So to escape all this fee and all review, uh, license, you know, and all this stuff. So they create some virtual machine, change in the beginning, it was like maybe 2% of code of Java original code. But after that, so when they run through this uh, special Delvic virtual machine things, Java become not just a Java, but Google Java, original one. So, boom! Officially they escape all this license uh, fee and uh, review fee and blah 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 fee. Uh, just a marketing trick. But it will always distinguish a point of Android operating system. You need to understand, remember this, whatever, memorize this somehow. Uh, version history. My goodness, I don't want to curse online, but it's a, like very painful process. And I create some very updated sheets for you. I highly recommend it. Print it like today or tomorrow. First you get this uh, hands to, to this uh, presentation, print it, put in your bathroom and look at this instead of this every morning when you wake up and do your things uh, in the bathroom. Uh, so until you just like remember, you know, and it's a super important. People lost so many freaking interview just because they was fell on this uh, version history. All right, I understand not everybody will pl plan to apply for Google so anytime soon. But it's a one of the like must part of a phone interview. So tell me all devices that you work for the last five years uh, plus uh, the operating system version of it. It was standard telephone screen for Google interview. But another thing, you know, I have girls. So she was completely prepared. It was one of my friends for Adobe. She pretty much passed the interview. So and uh, the last question was, hey, okay, so. What about devices? What kind of devices you use for testing? Oh, she's like, oh, iPhone and Android. It's like, oh, okay, so what kind of Androids you use? It's like, oh, my goodness, okay, she just say some whatever name. It's like, oh, really? So in what operating system was it? And it was boom. It was just end. After that, they ask her how her son doing, how she like a country, blah, 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 and they never call her back. So... I understand that you may not take this seriously. I mean, oh man, I have so many things to learn. This one is the one thing that you must learn. Doesn't matter. Or you will not make it. Sooner or later they will ask you some question and you will look like a dumb. Or, you know, you don't want to look dumb. So I, I consider that you guys all smart guys. That's why you're here. So take your time. Learn it. And we will try to, to come back again and again to the subject. So updates and upgrades, uh, just logically think, if we have so many Androids, if we have so many makers, and uh, so many providers, and uh, every of these guys have some their own input on Androids, whatever. So is it really easy to upgrade and update some version? Oh no, unfortunately not. So in compare with uh, Apple product, where this, uh, for a long time uh, all updates go further, firmware over the air, it's just uh, another definition that you need to know, water or photo. Uh, so in the 
Android world, it's only certain model uh, is allowed to upgrade to the next uh, version, and it's only chosen by makers. And sometimes it's like very, very painful upgrade process, and you need to first download a certain uh, version, and from this version, like for example, if you have 2.3, then some special phones you can upgrade to 4.0. From this 4.0, you need to go through the installation of this special manual to upgrade to 4.1 or 4.2, and that's it. It's a maximum that you can uh, do from 2.3.7. I mean, uh, so it's um, you need to be aware of this. And it's a good point. It's not technical, but it shows your knowledge about phones, and you can talk about this long. Makers recover carriers. It's just curiosity number. So from 369 uh, United States designated uh, carrier providers, uh, non, we can say literally so like 95% uh, work with Android. Where the 5% go? It's go towards iPhone and Apple product because so we have Apple Store itself, which don't sell anything else than uh, Apple product, and we have some special. Uh, 12 or 14 original carriers who are just only assigned to sell uh, Apple again, this, um, devices and nothing else. So plus we have uh, Cricket and Virgin Mobile uh, who just to cover this uh, so at the same time, uh, which uh, sell I so Apple prepaid plans. I mean they sell Android as well. So 95% of United St uh, State carriers uh, sell Android. And we also can brag if we have nothing to say and we are like completely out of information, don't know anything, but you always can brag about the live battery. Again, it's a logical conclusion. So because we have so many devices and uh, it's like no really plan, uh, you know, this, and we will have never always some fragmentation issue. So this uh, between devices and applications, specifically if it will be a straight web mobile application, Boom! So then, life battery will be always uh, subject of improvement. Also, if it will be like doing better. So right now, this is no breakthrough with the battery, unfortunately. So web browser, ha! Huh, it's one of my favorite subjects. Let's skip this for one minute and go. So here's a picture, then you really helpful to print, and it's architecture of Android. So here's a picture, then you must print and know. So for all this Android version history. So uh, most common is uh, these days is still Jelly Bean. It's a uh, 45%, and it was uh, back in November. So this I pulled this number on November 1st. Okay, maybe the number a little bit changed, but so still. Now we talk about browsers. Uh, think is then Android have default browser. It will be web Android browser right here. So by the way, why I put all these uh, special icons that represented? So this uh, really logo of all this company. Believe it or not, it happened already three times to different students. So then you know, there was blah, blah, blah about browser because it was related to web mobile application. So they apply for company work strictly with uh, browser and browser compatibility testing. Boom. So and they give, uh, again, so they got some pages with different logos. And the interviewer was asking, like, okay, so show me this, what is your favorite browser? Show me the logo of your favorite browser. It's like, oh, okay, duh. So then you don't get in this confused uh, situation, kind of uh, get relative, so this and get in a relationship uh, with all these logos, all right? Um, so come back to default browser. We do have default browser, web Android, but the thing is then you can completely change. So who are you? So this is you as a user, provider, or ma uh, maker can change default browser forever to any other uh, browser to make your own default browser. So and actually this, uh, believe it or not, we have up to 100 uh, browsers around the world, so web browser. Uh, in the United States, it's like top 20 of whatever web browser that people use. Um, be very careful with uh, Google Chrome. Again, it was cost another my friend's interview because uh, so she was very good of everything. And the last question in the interview was, okay, so tell me about your project, uh, blah, blah, blah. She was like uh, kind of okay with that. Uh, so what browser you use? And she's like, oh, so Firefox, like, Firefox, really? 
that's a good browser. She's like, oh, yeah. So this, I not really like uh, Firefox, but my favorite is Chrome. It's like, are you was testing on Chrome? It's like, yeah. Okay. The problem is the interview was uh, actually occurred in uh, 2012 February, and Google Chrome as a mobile version come first in June 2012. So then all her story, then she was like completely, you know, confident and talking like walkie talkie. So completely was vanished just by this small things. Then she was completely wrong about uh, mobile browsers. And it was very pity because like one hour before that we was talking about this and I told her that she need to check for browsers because it's a much more browsers these days. It's like, oh, come on, I know everything about browsers. So she was confident in that. And one small thing and she don't get a job. So you aware of it. Uh, you, if you see this, a lot of slides have some special link. So it's for your self-learning again. You're welcome to go explore these things the, to find your best browser. I highly recommend and it's actually very good for your future job. Just in any case, uh, put on your mobile devices at least two, three browsers besides the default one. So to play around because if it's come moment of truth, uh, do you have and do you know anything about uh, about browser compatibility testing or what browser is your favorite or what browser do you know at all? So then boom, you will be aware, you'll be prepared. So what to say and how to say. It's like, okay, I play with this, I play with that, you know, my favorite is still default. Nothing wrong with that. But at least you can compare and uh, say some right words about this. Okay? Hey, it's a long time I don't see anybody, any activity on the screen. Are you guys still on live? It's okay. I'm sorry. We're a little bit over. So uh, the same thing then, what do you know about uh, iOS and I, I, so Apple platform? The same path. So we will go through very quick. Uh, so source will be proprietary or close. Platform will be Unix. Core language is Objective-C. What is so special about the op uh, operations architecture, operation system architecture? you should know or be aware. So from our level of uh, testing, uh, specifically from manual perspective of testing, so all what you need to remember and uh, look on this old picture graphs if you get them uh, at all. So this you look uh, for keyword Cocker Touch. Cocker Touch is a uh, upper soft, uh, we can say this upper application frameworks level in operating system where you may possibly have some task um, if you already get some experience with uh, kind of API testing or something like that. So it's a go direction to gray box or white box, so automation things, but uh, it, at least you know this, um, you are aware of this. Okay, all testers should know about Cocoa Touch. So, yeah, and here are the things. It's right there. It's all what you need to know pretty much about the operating system. So, what we have also. Version history. Oof, it's not so intense like uh, operation. So, version history of Android. And good things about operation history is a version history right there somewhere. So, everything then you see kind of yellowish. So, it's already degrade things. It's discontinued. Uh, we still have 6.1, like 0.3% people still have 6.1 operating system. But because it's so convenient for users to switch to updated new version of 7, you know, the most of them already have this, so 99% have it. Whatever. So, and the latest uh, current, whatever, current latest version of iPhone is uh, 7.0.4, so like what? Oh, shoot, I'm not updated. What is the day today? Uh, 80? So then it's already four days ago. <laughs> Hi, Mama, must watch out so this for this thing. Uh, okay, update, upgrade is easy because it's a four day and it actually was from uh, 5.0 uh, iOS. What is the current iOS? 7, yeah, from uh, iOS 5, it was going... Uh, so for the, before it was going through the iTunes, but again, it was always kind of organized and easy process. So makers, you know, then it's only one and number one. So carriers I already covered, it's only 5%. Live batteries, okay, think about closed system, uh, hard and software under one roof, everything is licensed, protected, security, blah, blah, blah. Okay, 
So it should be very good integration level between the heart and software and then the live battery should be much better in compared to some other one who just uh, don't have any plan how to do these things and get this good integration between soft and hardware. So web browser, it's actually interesting things. Um, right here. So what you need to remember, all right, you you have multi-links where to explore all this browser. Um, so we talk about Safari. Safari is default and only default browser for iPhones, uh, or actually for all our Apple products. You do have possibility and chance to add any other browser. Yeah, sure. You can make a list of it, but you never can change default from Safari to some other browser. And other things you must know and remember, again, based on your resume or whatever experience. So with Firefox Home mobile version was on the market since 2009. So good or not good or right, it's another thing and we will not discuss it. But um, in September 2012, they break up with um, Apple. Why? It's, I mean, it's a conspiracy thing because there was already a plan to be competitor with Apple and that's what they big plan so when they create their own Firefox operating system. Uh, so in, uh, we'll see how it's going. By the way, this, you know, tendency uh, the, of the same plan is going Android world as well. So I don't know if you're aware or not, but uh, Samsung was uh, actually this, you know, bringing official news. So then they work on their own standalone Samsung operating system. And that's why this, they already have some tension with Androids and Google. So because they try to, you know, uh, at least they flexible devices. So this assume devices uh, with flexible OLED. I, they try to create their own Samsung operating system so and go their own direction. So you remember about Chrome, then it's uh, become a mobile version only in June 2012. So people ask me all the time, so what is the most popular common blah, 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 so for Android and for iPhone? You will never fail wrong if you, this day, if you claim that, you know, you work lately in 2013 or second half of 2012. Yes, it will be done Chrome, Dolphin. Dolphin is a very good browser. A lot of people love it. For Android, so this will be Maxton, uh, a new C browser from China because um, it's a, a just a lot of feature of uh, IE, so of Internet Explorer, and people feel comfortable, people who long time work with Windows, so they like it. So here's this uh, very quick, I, I don't need to go through the table because it's just comparison of what I just tell you for the last uh, 15 minutes. Uh, you just compare these two uh, platforms, Android and uh, iOS. And we will uh, go to application framework. Are you guys still okay? I feel bad, but hey. <laughs> It's like never stop, never enough, because, you know, we cannot really spread this at, at two times. It must be covered in one, so then you get full picture and adjust as a full uh, coverage of uh, mobile uh, ecosystem. Should I continue, or it's already too much? Like, man, it, it's happened every time like this. Maybe I sign off. <laughs> um, so what should we know about frameworks? And uh, specifically, we talk about application frameworks. People confuse. It get me a really long time to understand without any technical problems. So what's going on? So and I try to bring this uh, very simple analogy. You know, this, so then people get a concept what it is. We don't talk about definition, all right? So, but it's very important to understand because it's also bring um, you horizon where you should go or where is it absolutely unsecure area for you, then you better don't go this direction. So the thing is then in general, all this, you know, the developers, what they after? Are they after to write this endless strings of something code? No, you know, this actually from developer side, it's not too many crazy developers who really want to do this all the time. So they want to create things. So when they create things, they they want to, you know, this uh, don't waste their time. So for writing strings, endless whatever quotes, uh, things. It's why this uh, frameworks was created. So frameworks, it's 
in my uh, understanding and in my explanation, I think it will be very simple. It's a bunch of libraries where this, for example, um, developers start writing code and he say, all right, push on the home button, go to the, I don't know, whatever, some special feature of the phone. So this uh, open there some couple pages, change some couple settings. Uh, and after that, so come back uh, to some point to start running something else. I mean, it's all, all generic stuff. But what I try to tell you, um, naturally, this, you know, if he creates some application, he needs to repeat all these long um, repetitive steps over and over again to explain to machine what he wants to do and uh, how it should work. Instead of writing this manually every time, so, you know, like all the string over and over again until he come to the point that, oh, from this point, I want something new step. So then he take all these five or six steps together and say, all right, all this string, and it's a long string, I write this one time, and I will name for now on, and this will be function ABC. And I put this function ABC in a framework in the library. So in every time I need this piece of code, I will not just write again. I will just pull it out from framework library. And so as a like, for this place, from the step number one, go to library and get function ABC. And that's it. So pretty much, uh, I, I hope, is it uh, you understand what I'm talking about? No? Yes? No. Give me a response because um, you know, this one is a very important fundamental thing that we need to understand. Okay, so far it's clear it's nothing like difficult, is it? Or I need to repeat at some point. Cool, cool. So, now this, what has happened if we bring this analogy from childhood, from uh, child world, and everybody will understand, and how you understand uh, and ex can explain also during interview because people love this uh, kind of concept. It's right here. What they do, I mean developers do, they just play Legoland all the time. They have piece of uh, information that have different configuration, different length, so, but it's uh, like a bricks of Lego. And you know this, I mean lately we have this uh, Lego undercover game. So from all these bricks and pieces of Lego, you can create unlimited things. Is it true? Yes. So then when you think about framework, you think then it's a bunch, it's a huge library or it's a huge box filled with different pieces of Lego. Then all these developers so take it out and build their own creature, so something unusual, something unique. That's it. It's how it works. Okay, how they know to, how to get the things out of this box? It could be a messy box. Who knows how this library is organized and how many things uh, is there? It's, and also, it brings you understanding why we have so many frameworks. Why pretty much for each platform we have frameworks. For different languages we have frameworks. So for different needs we have frameworks. Because, so it's uh, easy to organize this not just like have one global library, man, you will get lost there. It will take so much time. So, but if you have chain of libraries, so one library, it will be only for technical tools. One is just for piece of code, a specific code for Java. One is a library will be specific uh, for Ruby on Rails, whatever. So it's why this, we have so many frameworks. It's why we have so many libraries. But, the next conceptual things that we need to understand, it's right, not here, okay, it will be in late in a couple of slides. So, uh, then, effectively, we take information from the frameworks using API. If I ask you today, what is API, then uh, I think then some of you will tell me the truth just based on a very dry definition or just uh, expansion of uh, abbreviation, API, what is this, application, programming, what, exactly, interface. 
So, behind that, if I ask you, okay, what it is? So, how's what? Why you needed the things? What it is? Nobody knows. It's taking almost a year, so because you know, I I really try. So, this when you go to internet, my goodness, they make this so freaking scientific. Then you completely lost what they're talking about. So, in when I finally got it through, what is APIs? I was like, really? It's it? No, repeat it. I really understand you, right? It's it. So. It's always like, you know, this hide very simple things in a package of some whatever very complex definition then because it's very hard. Not everybody should understand this. Okay, between us, we in special club, we should understand this and understand this very, very simple. So it's how components work together. Okay, programming components work together. This one, you know, this other word for API, it's actually when we talk about API, so what keyword they use they call uh, they use word calls messages so this actually this what it is it's just a kind of um, calls or you know this um, you have your empty box you want to start uh, we take for example a Google Maps API Ta-da! so it's a special command special calls or um, set of messaging how to retrieve write a function from different libraries or uh, different uh, write strings from different libraries to build your original base on Google Maps, your own map. It's all what it is. So then you send a uh, string of information pretty much in HTTP format uh, using XML or uh, these days JSON. So some of uh, very simple languages pretty much. So and it's asking, hey, Give me this piece of Lego, please, because I need to build whatever, some boardwalk, uh, so on a street uh, 200, so Walnut uh, Creek, something. All right, so this, and uh, you got, you send it this message because it's an API for Google Maps specifically. So this message go right away to the right library and retrieve your right piece of Lego, then you start build your own creation of uh, maps. That's it. So, but if you understand what API is and how it's work and what is a, and you know, like hierarchy, so it's a between uh, user interface and between this is first level of uh, uh, software application, you know, frameworks development layers in operating system. So it's a go back and forth string of give me this, give me that. Oh, you don't have it, please, can you create it? All right, you create it, give me this back. It's all what it does. So, but, um, in a, you know, at some point when, when you got this concept, then it will not look so boring because I was kind of afraid of API for a long time because it was for me like jungle. If I don't understand, I'm afraid of it. So and finally when I got it, so then it's not really bad because it was, I, every time I was like, feel like dry mouth, every time I was thinking, my goodness, all day work with these things? Just to look at strings and, and nothing to do with interface. Do not push button and don't see anything. Just strings, strings, strings. It's like, no, I will not survive. It's a, too boring. But now when I got it, then it's a pretty much like you know, very interesting, you know, it's job. So this to move in between libraries to create some special string and keyword search to retrieve right information effectively, get exactly function you want. And actually our job as a, uh, API tester, so gray uh, box tester, to check then, you know, this, because again, it's a human factor. We check then it was right API and API was go to the right library and get right function because if it was similar function because they don't found exact fa function then needed. So, and it was implemented in the code. It's where we can have a uh, code crash or breach or something, or freeze, or a glitch, whatever this is coming. It's what happened. And it's a job of gray box tester. All right, so we cover these uh, things. I hope this uh, you got it concept, and you will not afraid now of frameworks and API when somebody asks you a question, what you know. So it's OK to explain without any technical words exactly your understanding of it, and it will be appreciated. Uh, but if you do not remember anything from what I was talking for the last 15 minutes again, uh, then at least you must remember this part. Because you say, hey, I don't know too much about frameworks, but I can give you an example. 
it will be your recovery. You know, this it will be not 100% cool answer, but at least it will indicate that you again in a subject and know something. So here's a, just two example. You will take it, you can print it, whatever you want to do, whatever you plan to do with it. Okay, we cover API. Uh, you can go through and check this one more time. Um, SDK, sorry guys, I skip it because we will not have time today for that. Application, then all what you need to do uh, and know about application, it will be very quick because we will spend uh, potentially one hour so talking about application and application only. So and as today, <coughs> sorry, uh, all what you need to know, then we have three types of applications these days. It's a uh, native application, uh, web mobile application, and mobile hybrid application. And I will try to introduce you all of this application. Most of the time, nobody will ask you a question. Do you know, give me definition about mobile application or native application. So most common question will be like this. Give me the difference or compare native and web application. And the keyword is it's actually only one sentence right here. It's all what you need to know and, and be able to explain. The native apps and web apps differ not just how they made, but how they could be accessed. So, naturally, native by the word, by the heart, uh, it will be made using special language, special SDK, special framework. Everything special, 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 just maybe for specific device or for lane of devices. So, when we are looking about web application, uh, it's using just a generic uh, HTML5 these days, CSS, uh, plus uh, at some point JavaScript. So, it's it. And it's uh, like made one, used by many. It's a keyword. Uh, okay, if we're talking about how it access, all right, most of native application, if it's not preset when you buy a device already, so then it will be through the store. Update go through the store and things like that. It's kind of way, okay, as a user you can give automatically permission so to update some apps if you're just lazy to every time push a button, update, update, update. But um, normally, in technically how it works, uh, if it's go through the store and it's a native application, you will get as a user notification, hey, we have update available, do you want to update? And it will be your choice as user, you want to update or not. In web apps, it goes straight from the browser and nobody asks you, you want to update or not, they update this left and right how they want and you may not recognize that you work in this application and at the same time it's updated at some point. So, it's only two things, you know, really this uh, then differ between uh, uh, native and web. When we compare with hybrid, my goodness, it is so hard now these days to differentiate what is native, what is hybrid application. Why? Because web and native, it's uh, come together and it's not love, it's hybrid. So I like this picture, don't worry about all these names, you don't need to remember them. All what you need to remember is the concept of one box, inside this box you have two par uh, parts. Big portion, it will be web portion of application and the small one, it's a native portion of application. Every time you are online and uh, you are in browser world, so the application is running, streaming and fetching and some of this information is constantly updated to the native portion. So if you are offline, then you still have most of uh, functionality is running because it was fetching ahead. So then, uh, and uh, you can have it as is also in offline and online mode. So why we need this native portion? Because uh, with this native portion implemented in application, uh, sorry, in device, so you have better access to special other native feature and operating system integration. So between your hybrid application and uh, device itself, it's what is the matter? How they really differentiate? So, by API, on a high technical level, what kind of uh, API format you use for this native portion and how the native portion communicate uh, in a web, with the web portion. So, but it's not scoop uh, of our talk today, really. So, again, when it comes to moment of truth, if somebody asks you a question uh, about uh, so hybrid or whatever, uh, why I brought so many words? 
This one is a keyword. If you look for job description or whatever requirements and see this keyword, it's immediately for you red flag. Then the guys want somebody who understand or work before this uh, hybrid application. Boom. Then, hey, spend your time and try to read everything possible about the uh, hybrid application. This one is in red. It's uh, pretty much um, your uh, escape. If you don't remember anything what I just said, so you can give examples like, hey, I don't know really how it's work, but I can give you example, and uh, so I can give you example of what part of uh, this application and program is uh, native, and what part of this application is web. And we will spend time on, on this later. So um, today, there's still one, two more last things. Sorry, guys. Oh my goodness, I feel bad. One and a half hour. <laughs> so uh, really, literally five minutes, and we're done. I give you this in broad uh, in extension because people confuse, you know, it's again a real uh, subject and a real fellow of interview uh, from another friend. So then uh, she is absolutely, she was working with this extension every day and uh, she got this question in interview. So what kind of extension you use? And she was blah, blah, blah about any possible thing, but not just give abbreviation of the stupid extension. So, and she fell interview and after, uh, she comes to me and is like, man, I answer all questions, but they ask me this over and over, extension, extension, what extension, what they want from me. It's like, hello, it's like, you work with extension every day. It's like, really? I am working? Where? It's like, okay, so where we start? This and this and this. It's like, oh my goodness. Okay, I don't want that it happen to you guys. It's why nobody really go deep in this extension. They just use this extension abbreviation all the time during the interview. Blah, 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 this APK file. Do you know some media file, the VMF, blah, 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 WMF, something, something. So this, uh, how about this uh, imaging share, this, are you use uh, PNG or JPEG, things like that. And at least sound like must click in your head what they talking about. Or maybe replay in the same way. Oh, yeah, you know, that's my favorite is blah, 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 something, another extension. It's it. But so you need to be, be aware of this. It's why I create like excessive amount of slides of all different area. So this uh, in audio, in video, in images, uh, in uh, game, executable files. So do you need to know all of them? No, at least like two, three. If they ask you, hey, what executable files extension you know? It's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. this and this. Your preference. I don't care. So, and don't hang yourself, it's everything will be fine, you will survive. So, the last thing is about services, and we will talk about this later more extensively, but, oh, what is this? Guys, believe it or not, it's a Google Cloud. I took this straight from Google. So, it's how the Google Cloud so database look like. So, <laughs> now, they make a nice uh, so features of this light. Normally, it's just everything in gray. Maybe it's some blue and yellow lights, yeah. So, but uh, it's how it's real this look like. But what is about mobile services we know today? Um, the first things then, you know, I will really go through. It's very simple, notification. So, log in, log out things. Yes, it's what mobile services are. Uh, we have authentication. We have database, diagnostic, all this special statistic, uh, you know, this uh, then running on the background of or like add-ons or extension of our application. So, and um, we have some diagnostic scales, so performance uh, issue uh, related to uh, mobile services. What else? Oh, monetization. So, everybody was going through as a, co a consumer or, you know, sooner or later you will come to, uh, to some work issue related to monetization and mobile services. So, here's, the, I think it's a very cool um, mapping things, you know, like a site map what kind of uh, location-based services you should or may know or work with. I think this is uh, like one of this uh, must print slide. Then you can also show this uh, later during interview. And actually it's kind of will guide you then you don't get not get lost. So who care about services and mobile services? Again, if you apply for cloud organization, if you apply any organization that will put something um, database related, or GPS navigation related, look for these services. Every time you apply for organization that uh, straight or relatively work with the services, 100%, so this, uh, it's coming to the question what you know about LBS, about location-based services. 
Ha, it's me. And we're done for today. Hooray, man. It was a long. I really appreciate so this time you stayed so long. And I promise it was only one time and one time only. So, because <laughs> um, other time this moon uh, we may exceed over five minutes, but not so long. Okay. So, uh, as a homework, let's think. I will create some email. I mean, it's not there yet, but I do this all the time. So, like... Let me type it out. And um, password will be so. I do this pretty much for every group. It's our secret weapon. I don't want so this. You pretty much will not find too much. Actually, nothing will find uh, of me and a port of portal. It's nothing conspiracy things or whatever. It's uh, two things I learn hard way. Every time I try to bring so much materials in, you know, uh, to the students, nobody open it. Nobody appreciate it. It's like whatever. I will take this anytime three years later. So and it's absolutely misconceptual, misunderstanding because in mobile, every month something happened and changed. And something who was big goes small and something who was small go big. And then the statistical number change, technology number change, whatever. A lot of things change. It's why this uh, I try to uh, do not confuse people because before I leave all my lecture in a port of portal, and people was bugging me with the question like, "Are in your lecture? I learned this blah blah blah, and it's not correct." It's like absolutely right. It's not correct anymore. So don't go to old lecture. Don't look for old files. So they must be updated like. Every time we start a new class or whatever, so it's why this I decide to always uh, create some collective email and put this through the email, you know, just uh, like a personal, and it's a share only with class and class only. So, uh, what should you do? This uh, you, I mean, it's not there yet. So this I will create this right after we're done uh, with our presentation for today. Actually, we can stop recording at this point.